Welcome back to Let's Not Call It Yoga. Today let's call it some stretching after the snowstorm. It's a beautiful snowstorm outside. Lots of snow, about a foot. <clears throat> it's a lot of work to move it. And that's on top of the work we've already been doing, staying warm. Because it's winter, we have to keep our, our fires stoked. So it's not even really yoga we're talking about doing today, it's just what I'm going to do in this moment and what I articulate to you in terms of what I'm doing and you could just keep your car hearts on, you could probably take your socks off, you can put them by a wood stove, that's really nice. For that matter, if you have a wood stove, you could lean on it. But the first thing you can do after having your arms really low, working hard, you can tell I'm a little twisted, but it's okay, is you can bring your arms up, <clears throat> interlace your fingers, <clears throat> press into the sky, and actually <clears throat> change the shoulders. Allow yourself to open up a bit. And just put the hands behind the head. Imagine the head is a ball, the hand is a mat, and your thumbs are on the little ridge underneath the skull. You close the eyes. You can walk your feet all the way together. Rotate knees slightly towards each other. And just arrive in this literal present moment in your body. and sense how it's organized and then how you might organize it differently. And the breath is really the eyes to sense what's going on in the body. As you inhale, just imagine the fires rising from beneath you. And exhale, envision grace descending from above you. Inhale, the fire rises up the back to the past you create every moment. And exhale, lowers down the front, descending into the future in front. While keeping a sense of lengthening through the top of the head, and keeping that slow breathing through the nose, Bring your attention to your feet, breathing into the heels, you're moving into your memory from the past, you can move into the ball of the foot, you're moving into your potential, into the future. When you stay centered in the middle with the arches lifted, you find a little rise. So the way you can kind of flow between memories and forward. Should I feel a sense of rooting in the knuckle of the big toe of the foot, the big toe mound, a lifting the arch of the foot. It's almost like the fire from beneath you is actually <clears throat> raising the arch of the foot, bringing that sensation of a lift from the feet, around the legs, up through the bottom of the spine. Then keeping the arms up, press the palms up again. King of the mountain, queen of the sea, hero of the snowstorm. Remember, this is just a short practice. We didn't even put on yoga clothes. So, when you're 
fingers under your chin. Start to soften the knees, soften the hips, almost like, just like the weight of the torso allows the knees to bend, the hips to pull back. Somehow, maybe the ribs, the thighs, and then the hands to the ground. Keep the knees super bent. You could interlace two of your fists in between your feet. And just fold down. Hands on the earth. And if this is a little too difficult, you could always have hands on blocks here. The point is to really have the knees bending, the hips pulling back, maybe even a sense of the torso extending. So if you have blocks or if you have like a chair would work, a bench, maybe a very stoic dog, just have a way to be in a little bit of a back bend here. The knees pressing forward, the hips pulling back, the arches lifting up. You just find some movement here. You can feel the ball. Now, if you're flexible, more flexible, you could maybe put the hands down. Remember that yoga is not about flexibility, it's about power. And especially in this moment, it's about the power to repair the body so that it can function well after a lot of effort moving magical snow. So whether the hands are on the floor or on a block, bend the knees deep, maybe try to get the ribs towards the thighs. Let's bring our fingers under our chin, lift the torso, pull the butt back, and then use your legs Stand up, bring the hips to neutral, press the palms up, and sway side to side. And then bring the arms down. Good, good shape, Mom. Reach behind us, interlace the fingers. Good. Press the knuckles into the low back. You might call it the sacrum, then shrug the shoulders up. On an exhale, pull them away from each other while pinching the shoulder blades, and walk the hands up the block, the back a little bit. So you could eventually come here, or you could fist bump. And just having the arms here for a second changes the angle of the shoulder, it opens the lungs in a different way. Then just slide your hands to your back with your fingers facing down. Knees forward, hug the belly and lifting up. Slight back bend, just pushing hips down, inhale to here. When I started doing yoga, <clears throat> I couldn't even do a little bit of a back bend. My lungs would close up. Good. Then we're just going to walk this down. Think about See if you can keep your hands sweeping down the back of the legs to be weird. And push the knees forward, get a nice hinge, head down, hips up. This time you might put your hands on your elbows. <clears throat> Allowing the elbows to pull away from the shoulders hips to pull away from the knees, the knees to pull away from the heels, bring your attention on the feet, figure out where you are. And exhale, start to sit the butt down and pull the elbows forward, keep the ears in line with the biceps. Then use your hips to hinge up, to power in your legs. And front and center. Lean your hips to the left, weight in the right foot. Good, inhale, neutral. Bring hips to the 
other side. Then you keep a nice lengthening in the torso and spine the whole time. Good. Then we come right back down. You can use blocks if you want. You can keep the elbows and the hands or just go down more gently. The goal is to fit knees and armpits. Have a sense of lifting in the hips. <clears throat> then bring hands down into the tabletop. Good. We didn't. We didn't even put a mat down. She could have put a mat down, but this is a bit more casual. So you could measure two fists side by side between your knees. Toes are pointed right back behind the knees, hands at the shoulders, and at the thighs. Good. <clears throat> and just arrive here. <laughs> so let's say you're now a car. You want to start yourself up. So the key in the ignition is striking the tailbone forward and upward, back. Forward and back. So we're going to inhale. Exhale. Chances are, if you worked with snow today, you got working before you really opened your body like this. All the movement is initiated from the bottom up. And then slow it up. <clears throat> Try and smile through it. It's not so serious. It's actually um, just a way we're fixing, putting the body back together. And then tuck the toes, pull hips away from hands. You find a downward dog. It's very short. Keep your knees bent. playing around between where the weight goes. Ideally, it's equally rooted in the hands and feet. I'm starting to open the shoulders in a different way. And then eventually walk your feet back to plank, lower down, untuck the toes, <clears throat> lay on your ribs, and interlace your fingers. You're going to just set your forehead on them. Then lift the head slightly, step the fingers, bring them up to the sides, try to have really loose shoulders. And the motion we want to focus on here is tucking the tailbone down, tucking the belly in, getting a little length. Now bring the arms in, hug them in, hands by ribs. You can lift up cobra. Down. Really want to use the rootedness in the legs to come up. 
the spine moving without the use of the arms, or not being directed by the use of the arms. One more time up. Let it become the tabletop. And it could go right to the down dog. Imagine you're pulling your hips away from your hands. You might play around with just using one arm. to further make you pull the weight back. And walk the feet to the hands, maybe the hands to the feet. Find a deep fold if you can put your hand on your calves. Bring your heels, just folding in. And on the inhale, find a chair pose. Drive the car, stand up. And then bring the arms up. Good, you can bring them behind the head or behind you. Keep putting more snow in my driveway. This is a coping mechanism. So bring hands back to elbows. Actually, want to get the palm on the elbow. And just organize the head for a moment. Try to see how the neck moves. Really without the shoulders being involved. It's really about in this moment letting go of all the hardship the shoulders carry, all the uh, maybe the emotions and the hips, feelings of instability and security. And then we're going to come down again, try to sit back, I'm going to sit into the fire, so sit back, as well pushing the knees forward, get this length, we're going to grab opposite ankles if we can, pull the elbows apart, and we'll do a little swimming, so we twist one arm up. Twisting from the hips upward. Good. And then we come back up one more time. And to back. I'm going to call it right there, keep this a very simple video. So feel your legs that you have a little more stability, <clears throat> hopefully a sense of agency in terms of being able to really get in the ball of the foot without lifting the heel too much. You're not lifting the heel, you're just moving your weight. Ball, to the heel. And the goal really would be to have a bit of stability in either position. <clears throat> and 
and I might just do that much after all the effort this morning. A nice way to finish this out would be to just lie on the back, block and the hips, tucking this down. Maybe even the arms interlocked. And listen to the breath. Bring hands to belly, so whether you're on your back or on the block. Just feeling the fullness of the inflation, expanding the rib cage. And exhale on the hugging in. You didn't need a block for this. You just lie on the back. Keep the hips glued down. Try to bring the knees to the hands with the shoulders relaxed. So hips and shoulders and knees and ankles, everything's relaxed. Just pay attention to the spine. And bring the hands to your feet. Maybe <clears throat> let the left leg straight. Do what you can in the pants, right? Hug the bent knee over to the opposite side. Lay on the arm. Bottom arm. You can push hips away from shoulders. And then do the other side.
of the back again. Feet as close as you can get to the hips. <clears throat> Knees have swift distance. And lift up to bridge just by lifting the bottom of the spine away from the shoulders. Slowly look down. So now we're putting power back in the legs, rooting the feet, lifting the arches, doing good extension. Slowly get down. Just pause. <clears throat> Bring that feet together, knees open. Try to keep the balls of the feet together, the heels together. Just for a few more breaths, feel the stability of the earth. The same stability that you have inside. This is a great point you could just get up and go throughout your day, go do everything else. Just having a little short reset, stretching, breathing. Don't have to call it yoga. Some people would say that the breath is a fire tending tool, internal fire. So you could roll a little, maybe to a seat. If you find a seat, you could sit like this in Varasana block or any other way. If you don't want to do breath work, <clears throat> you can go right now. This is just a video that I encourage you to stretch. If you want to do breath work, you could bring a hand to the back of the head. Remember where we started with the class, with the head pressing into the hands, the hands slightly lift of the head, chin tucking, sense of rebuilding, our life on a spine and check all your angles. Remember that all movement initiates from the hips, <clears throat> from the bottom up. <clears throat> that was clearing out our lungs. Find something close to stillness, but like moving stillness.
moving stillness. What is that? That's ridiculous. Paradox. Pull the shoulders apart. Give a slightly massage the back of the neck and the thumbs. Always trying to help the breath move <clears throat> to different places. <clears throat> Bring your hands down the hips, the knees. Go forward and back a few times like we already did. Make a few little circles each way. Good. And then now reach your arms out. <clears throat> Exhale, soften all the shoulder and elbow things to fist bump behind your back. Good. And just breathe here for a moment. Coat hanger. Bring the hands to the shoulders. <clears throat> Just do a little twisting. Inhale to the left. <clears throat> Exhale to the right. Good. Let the arms <clears throat> go to the head again. Good, we've got stillness, <clears throat> bring hands to thighs, Palm, <clears throat> palms up. Remember as you inhale, let an effort rise up the back. Keep a pass you create in every moment. And exhale, envision grace raining down front of you, open palms to catch it. Remember that the greatest failure in life is getting bitter about snow, <clears throat> about anything that happens. Maybe the greatest potential in life is us being the hero of this journey in this body using this, these tools as recipes for joy, to feel like we fit and we live in our bodies well, and we have a good vision for the future. Remember that we're always triangulating between left side and right side, between up and down in future and past, <clears throat> trying to stay very centered on our spines, centered in our minds, in our arms, and legs, feel a sense of stability in our legs, a sense of ability especially to be relaxed, bring our hearts forward in our arms, a sense of really seeing what's happening well in our mind, in our eyes. We'll be the hero of our own journey. Thanks for joining. Let's not call it yoga. That was a bit yogic though, whatever that means. Have a great day, friends.